this is Doug Stanhope, and you are listening to Revolution of the Board Podcast. Another one. Holy shit. Revolution of the Board. We're back with the, uh, what is it, the 13th episode? Or 12th. Or 12th. I think on the website it's only 11. Yeah, guys, but uh, it's, we're fucking finally back after goddamn like fucking four months almost yes, not recording. before my Revolution of the Board art show that you never showed up to. <laughs> sorry. Dick. Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> I got held up. Uh, but yeah, man, that fucking intro that you guys just heard was uh, our fucking crowning achievement for this podcast and personally Dave as well. Dave made it happen. I made that shit happen. We got to see our idol, Doug Stanhope, live here in El Paso, Texas at the comic strip. It was phenomenal. Inspirational. It was just magic on stage. But yeah, actually, so yeah, we're, it has inspired us to finally get back to recording our fucking podcast, putting out some nice offensive material to you fine folks. We actually do have a couple guests here, one of which will remain silent, but yes, For Alex. most of the time, like, well, then you might remember her from one of the other previous, uh... You'll remember her silence from previous podcasts. Podcasts, aside from when we were talking about Sid Vicious. Right, Alejandra. And then, of course, we also do have uh, a, new, a, a newbie to the show, Ms. Grecia. Hi. Let me have a little bit of this coffee. Let me have some coffee. Does it have milk? <laughs> yes, Grecia has been fucking oh, she's uh, been shot. Drowning. She's been, sh- yeah, she's been shooting fucking uh, creamers all day in a very, all day, all, since we've been here. In, in a, a very, very sexual, sexual way. Fashion. Because uh, I'm sitting on her side and I see like she spills milk all over her lap. Yeah, and like that almost looks like the stuff I used to, well, I kind of. I'm just going to keep it from there because I have family that might listen to this podcast. But anyway, so for you folks listening at home, you, uh, she's now eyeing my freshly poured coffee like she wants something hot and black inside her. No, I want uh, something white over my legs. <laughs> exactly. What was that? You want something white over my legs? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, it's Maybe we can talk yourself into that. We'll, uh, we'll just <laughs> go and have an experience in the bathroom soon. Yeah, it's a whole, I don't want to do But yeah, we're actually... Uh, this. <laughs> This uh, this edition of Revolution of the Board is actually uh, coming straight to you from our local village inn. You know, this is the first for us. We, uh, the the first time we've ever done a podcast aside from, like, about 99% of them have been at Dave's house. Yeah. And then one was in the backyard, which yeah, was, that was last the closest thing summer. To a field recording that we've had. It was actually so last summer. summer. Yeah, so almost a year ago. Fuck, man. Yeah, it was probably like June or July. A few more months, we're going to be coming up on our second year of, uh, of podcasting that's insane man <laughs> it's insane but at the same time but yeah, yeah if you guys do I, hear us uh, like uh, forgive us for the uh, the long time the long time that we took because uh, we both have work I was going to school mm-hmm. and Dave finally got a job and he was peddling a uh, you know, child porn at Walmart. Yes, I was. You have a job now? <laughs> no, actually, that's the job he I was had. at. Oh, okay. That he had. That's why we weren't able to do the podcast because we were both always so busy. But then, we might as well just bring up that first conversation of also another reason why we were busy because of not trusting our instincts as indiv- individuals. No. Oh, yeah. Well, basically, um, Josh and I are both. Uh, Experience getting kind of fucked over. I think right now to order food. Yeah, actually, that's what I was. That's what I was getting at. We were actually, you guys are actually going to hear us uh, probably taking sips of our coffee, eating, ordering food. It's because we are, and also hearing the uh, background music that's actually being played through Village in speakers. Right. That's not. That's not edited in, folks. That's because we're right under the the sound system here. So we got some nice adult contemporary fucking music backing us. Yeah, but. Either way, yes, that we went through some. You have a jacket on. We have problems. I know I can warm him up. 
<laughs> with milk? <laughs> yeah, with milk. <laughs> coffee. <laughs> he just fucking scalds her. <laughs> just for the sheer comedic value, just fucking burn, gives her third degree burn. we just hear in the- like, got hurt, David, also. This is our long, uh, gap between podcasts, and it's like, now you hear someone getting third degree burns all over her legs and possible cooch. Impossible cooch. He's not sure if you have a cooch. He said you're possible no, cooch. I'm saying this. <laughs> if I poured it on your lap, oh God, would it burn right. your legs or would it also burn there? But. My possible cooch. Your possible I'm pretty cooch. sure I have one. You're pretty <laughs> sure. Not 100% sure. <laughs> okay, oh, okay then that makes me doubt my <laughs> decisions too. But either way, what we're talking about was uh, in the break between uh, podcasts, we kind of let ourselves. Uh, our barriers down, and I know I did this specifically that I didn't trust my instincts with a certain individual, but at least it turned out to be an infatuation instead of actual true feelings, mm-hmm. otherwise I'd still be miserable, but uh, I denied my instincts, where I kept saying like, inside, it was like, just leave this kick her to the curb, fuck this shit. And I did it because I thought, am I just being a cynical asshole? No, I don't understand. And like, I'm not gonna go into the details. Oh, no, Actually, here's a, right wait a time. perfect time. You're right. Hold on, please hold. We're gonna order for a sec. You guys go ahead. Go for it. What are we having? I just want a shot of chocolate. Hot chocolate? Yes. Mm-hmm. And can we have one milk for his coffee? Mm-hmm. Um... Oh, I want the the VIP. Mm-hmm. The VIP. No, VIP. VIP. Okay. I want uh, the um, skin, the uh, two egg cholesterol substitute omelet mm-hmm. with skin mozzarella, also the hickory smoked bacon strips uh, with fresh fruit and, <laughs> <laughs> and the strawberry cream. Anything else, folks? Uh, let me actually get the uh, chicken strip dinner. Chicken strip dinner? Chicken tenders or whatever. Are you getting a soup and a salad or anything? Uh, actually, yeah, let me get a... Let me get a salad. Salad? Ranch, Italian, blue cheese? Do you have, uh, Caesar? We have Caesar dressing. Yeah? Yeah. Are we getting dipping sauces, honey mustard, buffalo, barbecue, ranch? Mm, no, just ketchup. Just ketchup? Yeah. Uh, I forgot your name. I forgot my name. Josh. Josh. Dylan was David. No, you're David. <laughs> you know my name. Come on. No, what was that guy's name? Please. Oh, my friend of a minute. Yeah, the Rubus Tooth Builder. It's like, we have someone that's here that doesn't even know any of the names. <laughs> I know, I'm really bad with names. But anyway, back to the podcast. Uh, yeah, Josh was talking about uh, what happened with us. You know, it was the past few months. It's like uh, the overarching months. theme. We don't need to get into details. It's just the overarching theme is trusting your instincts, trusting that gut feeling. What exactly. And that's why it was a bad thing that I didn't trust my instincts. Mm, exactly. But at the same time, holy shit, this weekend was the greatest weekend I've ever had in my life. That's right, Josh. I actually got to meet two of the idols in person in this in the what three day span. Yes, within a 3D weekend, because I actually requested that day, this last Monday, or yesterday, off. Mm-hmm. Um, well, ever since somewhere between 6th and 7th grade, I got into Marilyn Manson. And, um... I never thought I'd ever get to meet them until this tour where I saw there was these VIP packages. So I said, fuck that, I'm buying it because I've been saving up money for going on like a trip and I have like about five days worth of PTO, pay time off for my work. So I could go up to like Salt Lake City and visit my buddy Mike or anywhere else. But I had all that money saved, so I was like, fuck this, I'm gonna get the VIP package. So this past Madison and Cooper uh, experience, I got to meet Marilyn Manson. One was 150, and then the extra one where you got your own like, individual painting or something was like 450. I was like, is not bad. No, it wasn't compared to like, especially the money that I've saved. And I showed up at the venue at 2. 
Could you mail us your first wall? No. You suck. I was about to say, can I touch your hand? <laughs> no. Well, I'm not even that much of a, I'm not that much of a Cooper fan. That's cool. Like I know some of his songs, I recognize them, but I've never bought any of his CDs. I've never I've only downloaded like one song maybe or a few. Um, but uh, all in all, it was just an amazing experience. I waited in line from about two to about close to like five. We got to meet him. I was wearing my concert shirt, which was the. Uh, oh, David, he like, actually commented on your shirt. Is my it? old David Berkowitz symbol shirt that I made back in 2001 or two, where it's a. Uh... Oh my God, that was hot. Go on. Yeah, I gotta see it just burn herself with the. But um. That's not. Well, good. she already had some white in her legs earlier. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> we're not in military. We're in a hotel. Actually. Yeah. Yeah, is... a hotel in Juarez. This music is just, you know, we're gonna start recording our next snuff film. That's like episode thirteen, Revolution Aboard snuff film. Exactly. We're just, we're just trying to decide which one of them is gonna die first. I want to this. I actually want to watch her die. But um, either way, uh, we all wait in a row to get the signatures and there was like a girl that was probably like maybe 13 at the most with her mom and when she came out after getting his autograph because we had like go and get the autograph she walked in front of us yeah she was in front of like she was <laughs> a few rows in front like a few people in front of me uh. and um it's uh each individual row goes in gets the autographs and then back at the line and then when it starts over again that's when the pictures got taken which I was trying to download with, before you guys got here but the village and uh, internet sucks so bad but either way when uh, that little girl came out she was crying like she just witnessed her grandma getting raped and murdered but she was happy about it? Or? Yes. <laughs> it was a happy kind of cry. But so it was like her asshole grandma got raped and murdered. It's like, yes, thank God, because she's the one that molested me. <laughs> you know, but um, either way, like, I got to meet him. And I was like, when I, right when I walked in, he saw my shirt. He's like, kicking it old school. Nice. And I was like, yeah, I made it myself. <laughs> exactly. Like, like, uh, like Pretty much like that. Like just a fucking mind guy. Because I was just like. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, because he's just sitting there right in front of me. Oh, and I was like, I didn't know what to do, I'm even reliving it a bit. Uh, and so I handed him my first edition of Long Hard Road Out of Hell, the hardcover book that I bought, and I still have the receipt and the bag from Waldo Books when I bought it. And uh, he signed it, he signed my ticket, and I told him how he's been such a huge influence on my life and it's just added so much to my life and he's like I hope it was a good one and I'm like it has yeah and that actually brings up a good point because like when you meet somebody like that that it's it's like oh yeah I meet him because they're famous and because they're like, like their music and shit it's different when you're actually meeting somebody that's had an influence on the way that you think yes, and the way that you view the world in high school I would carry around it was we bought it at I, well I bought it close to my birthday my freshman year at an antique store for about 12 bucks was a old strawberry shortcake metal lunchbox that I bought. I got home that night, covered it with electric tape and Merlin Manson pictures, and I carried it around every day in high school with me. Did anybody take the tape off anytime? No, it like the old age made the tape slide. Yeah, I know. But no one ever really fucked with my lunchbox because it was always mine and I always had it on my side. I always carried it every day, even till I graduated. The only time I never had it in my hand was the only other time, well, one of the only times I could ever think of that. Because it's really hard to beat off with a lunchbox in your hand. I don't beat off at, I never beat off at school, fucker. Then you're a great, you're a, you're, you're a greater man than me, my friend. Anyways. Can you um, it? Yes, it's still in my room. Awesome. I wouldn't have given up that lunchbox for anything. But either way, like, my senior year, Halloween, I was Edward Scissorhands. And so I had it in my backpack because I had, like, the fake cardboard and, uh... Oh, the foil. 
this aluminum foil scissor heads. Yeah. And that was the only time I ever had girls kind of like fawning over like, oh, when I'd walk by. Yeah. But actually, they, like I'd see this look in their eyes that I never experienced before and maybe even still haven't experienced to this day. <laughs> I'm not as skinny as I used to be. <laughs> in high school, I was real thin. Dude, oh you know, your hand doesn't have a gut that jiggles. You and me both were fucking real thin in high school, man. Exactly. I was like 165 pounds, same height that I am now. For some no, but you're taller reason. than me. But in high school, I was like less than 130, probably up until my senior year. <coughs> <coughs> and um, yeah, now I'm about down to 150. But uh, the heaviest I was was about 180 over the past few years. But yeah, that's I mean, the heaviest you were. That's that's what I'm trying to get down to right now. I'm like at 185. Dude, I'm 5'8. Oh I'm Stanhope height. You yeah. towered over him. I'm like three inches taller than you, dude. Still, there's something about that yeah. because Stanhope always talked about being 5'8 or something. And he's a little person. He's a little, like a little bit shorter than me. But then again, it could be the age. But who knows? Either way. That was my experience, and then finally, the show at Manson and Cooper. People thought I broke my nose because maybe I was finally wearing contacts, and my nose has always been crooked since a few times I've broken it throughout my life, especially at a punk show. Yeah. And, um... I know the lunchbox thing reminds me, but what was in college? No, actually, I know what it reminds me of. I don't know, because I probably guys in the inside of my face. Oh, you're a uh, violent yeah, like Well, I have because it's the first time I've ever met I said you guys. <laughs> I know I broke your knee five minutes ago, dude. I don't care. Josh, right? Morphine. Yeah, he goes by the name. He goes by Morphine. That's my musical name. Josh is good at I'm not a fond of nicknames. It's my musical name. Yeah, but I think your mother... No, not you, like, every time it's like, oh, follow my nickname. I said, your mother gave you a name. Oh, well, that's that person's name is really ugly. I don't know, like... We're going to say something about space out. Anyways, um, <laughs> this is going to be a very disjointed the, podcast, you guys. I Seriously, I, I'm going to be fucking up for weeks editing the shit I out of I saw the show, yeah. and I am still sore. It is Wednesday. Or, no, Tuesday. Oh, well, it's Wednesday, technically. Well, it's, yeah, Wednesday, technically, because it's... Uh, 12.41 a.m. in Village in El Paso, Texas. And um, I am still sore my calves because I was jumping around so much and my throat is still kind of fucked up because I was screaming <laughs> that <Sorry>. much <laughs> no I wasn't sucking Manson's dick fuck face would you have if, well, if he, he had asked you to no <laughs> if he had in asked high school maybe mm -hmm. now no but if he pulled a Ted where he's like you want a party I'd be like would you do a line of coke off of his semi-erect penis? Why no. semi-erect? Why not fully erect? Because he's doing a lot of blow and he can't get hard when he do a lot of coke. Oh, okay. Well, I'm taking cocaine. I don't know that. Well, so you don't have a dick. So even if he did do a lot of cocaine... There's still a lot of experience that you're missing yeah. out on there. It's like... We're not having a coffee. Exactly. Anyways. Sorry to family that might be listening. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Aunt Maggie. Again, I apologize. Again. I know you've been probably pissed at me for the last, what, two years that we've been doing this? But, um, either way. Yeah. Uh, mm. Oh, Melissa, you're hungry. Because I think I might have to steal some of those. The rice or the... Either or. But, um, either way... I'm take your fried I like that tough one. Don't do it. Don't do it. I was just laughing to fry out of her head. It's the first time I met her. But, um, either way, the, if, uh... It's a revolution of the board. Have you checked out their no, page? She hasn't, it's the first time she's met me. So oh, you have to, you have to see it now. She you doesn't know about it. Okay. No. We're starting actually Did to get... <laughs> Again, I have to explain what she just asked me to the people who can't see. Because if you just hear her asking me if I want milk, it sounds kind of weird, but she's actually asking for me creamer. For my... Yeah. I'm wow. a girl, okay? I don't have Where's your dipping sauce for the chicken strips? Hmm? No, he ordered the... No, the Caesar sauce. Oh, the dipping sauce. I didn't get dipping sauce. I just wanted ketchup. Because I put fucking ketchup on everything. Ketchup and Tabasco is good. I put mayonnaise on everything. That's a so far. 
know, an epiphany just had. I realized that I like creamy things a lot. <laughs> What was the first time I met you, but obviously, get that done in my car. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no, kidding. But, yeah, you know. No, but I really, for example, I love mayonnaise. I love ranch, and I have to put on everything. Oh, by the way, awesome that you call it mayonnaise, because I fucking hate when people say mayonnaise. Mayonnaise? What kind of mayonnaise? Stupid people. In El Paso. Oh. Mm, no, it's not even an El Paso thing. I've heard other people from out of town say mayonnaise. Well, okay. And I understand it's kind of like a like a drawl or like it's like a it's a dialect kind of thing, but yeah. a, like no, it's, it's a regional thing sometimes where people say it's either soda or it's pop. Because mm -hmm. it's like if, look at the way the word is fucking spelled mayonnaise. But either way, I would have party with Manson if he had asked me to. But during the show, it, it kicked ass because I might have like got punched in the face during the mosh pit and then I crowd surfed and I got dropped and I think I might have kicked someone in the head because when I got dropped uh, someone just kicked me right in the chest mm. but then other people pulled me up and so somebody got pissed and just fucking retaliated yeah but either way I don't care because I got closer and I got an amazing photo I, I saw that fucking picture it was like this dude that was badass I look professional well, check done. it out if you guys haven't seen it, I have it as my favorite. That's Bondi? Yes, I have very popular stuff for this. Every time I find a Fiji song buying all that music, I want to cry. <laughs> Check it out. That is an awesome picture. That was after I got dropped. I, I would surfing. imagine that in his... Uh, wow. in we'll link to the picture that Josh is talking about right now, but this yeah, way, you guys at home... It's on my Facebook. He's profile. showing... Uh, yeah, he's showing... Uh, guys, you know, the picture of Manson where he's on he the podium awesome. giving this very dictator-like pose. Look, he's which doing... Is, He's doing the Antichrist Superstar podium, so if you were a Manson fan, you know where the fuck that comes from. Did, did you have a... Uh, did you it was just it's my cell phone. That's the best that's, thing. That's awesome, because I actually was looking at the pictures that uh, a friend of um, mine had, and she took a professional camera and they saw it. Oh. Well, then you have to... You guys add me tonight on Facebook, and I have the Manson and Alice Cooper... Uh, like uh, album. Mm -hmm. That is so awesome. Um, let's do one of Dave's chicken strips. Oh, fuck it, this is the first time we've ever done a podcast like this. Mm -hmm. Is it white less? Like this. What is podcast like? like this. Oh, I thought it said white less. It's like this. Do you want to ask Yes. Yeah. Anyways. Oh, Should we just stop recording so we could eat? <laughs> Do you no, want to? I don't know if you guys want to. Because the conversation is going to be like broken up because yeah. everyone's so busy. Alright guys, we're going to take five just so we can fucking eat and then we'll pick, a, pick it yeah, up. Yeah, because also I'm going to have to take a piss. Alright, sorry. I bet daily friendship with that bottle attracts more people to advertising than any salary you could dream of. That's why I got in. So enjoy it. Doing my best here. Oh, you're not. You don't know how to drink, your whole generation. You drink for the wrong reasons. My generation, we drink because it's good. Because it feels better than unbuttoning your collar. Because we deserve it. We drink because it's what men do. We ate. All right, we finally fucking finished eating. There was some vacuuming going on, but that's because they're closing up and everything. But what we need to bring up is the fact that yeah, the last thing we were talking about was the fact that uh, you know how Josh actually got to meet Marilyn Manson, one of his actual, one of one of his idols, one of somebody that uh, you know shaped uh, part of the way that he thinks, the way that he views the world. As an artist, he has really been the main influence of my life. Exactly. Not only two days later, we actually got to meet another uh, another major figure in. Uh, and the way that we think uh, Doug, Doug Stanhope, that yes, we've mentioned you, countless times. If you have heard us, I mean, fuck, our podcast name is Revolution named after Report. a bit of his. Exactly. That, a tagline in a bit of his. Exactly. And yeah, I mean, you heard him, uh, I mean, I'm going to edit this into the to the show, but you heard him in the in their new intro that we have. 
He was fucking was, cool enough to record that. It was like, that was uh, that was us. Amazing that was Dave experience. just going up and asking him to do an introduction for us. And but yeah, I had the had the pleasure of uh, being able to get to know him, get to talk to him. Not Bingo to licked him. his face. Yeah, fucking Bingo, uh, Doug's girlfriend licked my face when we were life. posing for a. Bingo ate the fries. Yeah. Posing for a picture and yeah, she she offered me her prize. Uh, fucking Doug bought me a beer. It was it was a cool experience. Dave like, has the beer saved. Like I actually had this uh, this talk with Alejandro. We were like we were, if you meet somebody, you know that's that famous that you respect. What would you really have to talk to them about? You know, like like meeting Manson. I don't know what the fuck I would say to Manson, other than you know I admire your work. I, I couldn't relate to him. I was stumbling. Yeah. I was stumbling to find like what to say because I was always like wanting to just tell him thank you for everything you've done and I actually did do that but I was also like like sitting there while he was like trying to figure out wait do I sign the black page or the white page of Long Hard Road Out of Hell uh -huh. and then he signed it signed my ticket and then he even grabbed the lanyard that I had for the VIP section uh -huh. he just grabbed it around my neck and just signed it nice and then what I need to download is the picture I took with him because when I came up with the pictures, he's like, oh, it's you again, hold on. And then he went to like his little rock star booth where it has like the mirror with all the light bulbs around it. Yeah. Or before I got in to get the autograph, his, uh, I guess his assistant was pouring himself a little shot of Mads of uh, absent oh um, and brought God. it out to his table, sat the, right next to him. And then when I went to get the picture, Manson went to something and he was doing something and I'm just standing there like, I don't know what to do. Oh, you fucking dumbstruck. Man. And he's like, Richard Ramirez style. He drew a pentagram on his hand because I had the David Berkowitz shirt that I made back in high school. So whenever I download the picture, it's going to be my profile picture where I'm pretty sure he's holding his, uh, his hand like Richard Ramirez did back in the court days when nice. he carved the pentagram in his hand. Marilyn Manson drew a pentagram on his hand for me. That is yes. fucking awesome, dude. Because the girl that was uh, went right after me that I knew, this chick Lisa, um, he wasn't holding the hand up for her. And she was the one right after me. So That was special. Yes, it was. That's why like, I left him like, he drew a pentagram for me. The only thing that could top that would if you had if he uh, fucking offered to beat you off while the ink was still wet, so the imprint of the pentagram was, you know, forever imprinted on your cock. I or if you wanted to pull a Ted and say like, you want a party? No, I thought he was gonna offer when he said the uh, the absent family doesn't offer something. That would oh, if he did, I would have, I would have taken a sip of absinthe or any drugs, just to have that story that. I got to meet Mel Manson and I did a bunch of things. There's certain things you gotta do just for the story, you know? <laughs> it's like, exactly. Anyway, Melissa, if you tell us a story of uh, you meeting someone, just, how you met anybody that would still feel like that since you're so quiet? Well, not like, not like Josh, definitely, like he met one, like two of his uh, biggest influence, which is really cool. I met several like different artists, but not, no one that has been such an influence and impact like it was for Josh. Yeah, because so, uh, like those albums have helped me through so much. Yeah. Like, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just like, that's why it's my favorite artist in the world. Well, that's that's how that's very similar to how it was for me meeting Stanhope because it's like his comedy shaped the way I he shaped my sense of humor in a lot Hell, of ways and his then my sense comedy of humor, and being fans of Stanhope is what got us into podcasting because the day when he and I got in contact again he just sent me like a text like hey check out the Rogan podcast. It's uh, Doug Stanhope's on there. That was the first podcast I ever listened to. And ever since then, that's why I went to the Doug Stanhope concert, the show, with the Death, Death Squad shirt. And when that's he saw me, he's like, uh, Death Squad. Yeah. And his voice. Fucking, dude, he's got such a re recognizable voice. But just the fact that we got into Stanhope first, and then everything from there kind of, it was like a domino effect, you know? Uh, we fucking got into the, I got into the Rogan podcast, and then I showed Josh the Rogan podcast, and then we got into other comedians like fucking Bill Burr, Louis C.K., you know, David Hell. Well, I've always been a little bit into Louis C.K. because... <laughs> yeah, we're doing good, man. Thank you. Because of, um, 
I didn't know who they were, but I used to watch Dr. Katz growing up uh-huh. because of Comedy Central. It would have Dr. Katz. And that was like one of the bits that I loved. Yeah. Where it was Louis C.K., but he was just a squiggle redhead. Yeah. He's talking about, it's like I've noticed about that with the Chico Bells. You suck. <laughs> he did yeah. that bit on Dr. Katz. Yeah. And um, Ray Romano, where he's talking about like, oh man, we. We're gonna get a hotel room and it's gonna be a marathon. It's like, oh, people are gonna give me like a number on my back and I'm gonna, they're gonna have me cups of water. But they'll be like, oh, wait, wait, don't move! Don't move! <laughs> you ruined it! Oh! Where's the remote? Don't look at me! Yeah. But so I'm always. Premature I'm always, ejaculation on. I'm always amazed room. like how, how our, our fucking interests, everything that we're into, seem, however seemingly randomly connected it is, it all like kind of comes together and funnels into this one creative channel that we have, which is podcasting, which is, you know, stand-up comedy. It's just like, in a way, you see how everything can be kind of interconnected and it, it inspires you because it's in the same kind of vein. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, we have so many different interests. I have the comedy, you have you have your music. Yeah, I, I have my we were music. talking about that with Stanhope, that mm-hmm. Dave can talk about like wanting to do stand-up comedy but for me i don't feel like i could do that i feel happier writing lyrics knowing that i'm gonna yell it at a bunch of people yeah and that's why i told stanhope when we were there yesterday that i would rather just scream it as lyrics than trying to do a stand-up bit because i don't want to have a reaction i just want to almost like yell and tell everyone fuck you yeah lyrically and then, well it comes back to what i was saying earlier it's like you know meeting somebody that's that influential on in your life but still like what would i say to them what would i how could i relate to that person yeah. it was cool because with stanhope uh you know we actually did have commonalities to where uh, i was talking to him about uh stand-up comedy is a, mm-hmm. for one thing and i was talking about doing a podcast and he was like you know, we, were, we actually had a back and forth, which was cool, because I was talking to him on a level other than, you're a celebrity, I'm a you're fan. You're talking you know, to him like a peer. Yeah, like a peer. Yeah, and for example, I've I never been able to hang out with any people I've admired. I've met some, you know, but mm-hmm. I think every, I don't know, musicians or movie stars, I don't know, let's say that you're doing a signing, you'll meet them for a couple of minutes, yeah. not past that, they're just going to say, oh my god, you... I love you and hug them and get the yeah. autograph and leave. And with you, um, you had the opportunity to actually have an actual conversation. With yeah, yeah a lot of yeah. people can say I met, example, Marilyn Manson. I met I don't know. No, exactly because what you could say, and you have it still. It's like I met Doug Stanhope and he bought me a fucking beer. Yeah, actually, I had bummed a cigarette off of him too. I'm like, see, and that's that's and his, actually a good point that she brings up. His my wife. Face. Well, yeah, his girlfriend, wife, whatever Bingo is. Uh, well, he, she, kept, he kept calling her his wife. He kept calling her his wife. Yeah. So his wife with her face. But how was that? Huh? Yeah. No, it's there's just pictures. It's like there's a there's a Wait. that's a good. <laughs> that's what she but said. But she brings up a good point. It's like there's a there's a difference between like you know meeting somebody at a signing, but actually hanging out with the person. That's the first time I've ever hung out with anybody that you know I've that. You've looked up to this. That I've much. looked up to, basically. Oh, I was about to tell you, not really, but that you actually looked up to. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. that night we would hang out actually with the uh, Wednesday. Yeah, we got oh, Wednesday 13. Yeah, Wednesday. Oh, we went uh, to lips. Before, or before a change or after a change? <laughs> no, at the Ronald Manson concert. They were there and we went to Village Inn with them. Wednesday 13? Yeah, he was yeah, they there. They weren't performing, but they uh, they were there to watch the show and uh, a friend of mine knows. Because they were going to perform at the Falls, you said. Yeah. Yeah, I've read seen this, this whole thing in the website cancel. Yeah, well, our friend knows the bassist. Uh, like, big the guitarist? guitarist? The guitarist. Oh, okay. And uh, so, yeah. like. Because I remember hearing that supposedly there was rumors that Guar was maybe going to show up. Really? Really? Oh, at the Manson show. Wow. That was just a rumor, but of course it didn't happen. Yeah. I know. Paris and Jackson came to the concert. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, we hung out with them, but it's, I mean, it's I like their the music, same. but it's not really somebody I look up to. You know, it wasn't somebody I could have a yeah, conversation I, with. I would appreciate Wednesday 13, but I only know, like, the only song I like by him is Silver Bullet. Yes. But that's it. My buddy Donovan would have loved it more, but he's been out of town because he's going to go see Download. But I got him a signature oh. bingo and Stanhope for him because we both love Stanhope. I think yeah. maybe I was the one that introduced a lot of my friends to Stanhope. Quick shout out to, the, if you're listening, man, my buddy Shane. He missed the Stanhope show because he didn't even find out about it until today, like the day after it oh, happened. Oh, that and he's like, too. fuck my life because he, he looks up to Stanhope a lot too. So, yeah, man, I'm, I am going to rub it in your face. 
Yes, but, uh, because sorry about that. Ingo <laughs> licked David's face. That is the tongue that is sucked down. Stanhope. Yeah, it's like in a in a six degrees of Kevin Bacon kind of way. I got cock slapped by Doug Stanhope himself. Yes, with Bingo's tongue. <laughs> so you're flooding your car. But I'll just say this without getting anyone in trouble. Uh, I think it was uh, lines of methylene were offered to Stanhope, but he knew that he had to get up and he had the next show in Albuquerque, which was I think today yeah. in Albuquerque, and. Um, but I think Bingo and maybe a relative or a sister, uh, I'll just say someone close to me, uh, ended up doing lines of methylene, which is like MDMA with an additional string, <laughs> Bingo and a family member. Yeah. Well, Bingo talked about uh, possibly shitting her pants because of the fucked up food here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's not. But it was just, it was... From what I heard, it was funny. But was it specifically the Wing Daddy's food that we were eating, or just what she's been eating all day? It could have been all day. day. Because yeah. they supposedly surprised Stanhope today. Yeah. Or last night. Right. They surprised him because he didn't even know that they were there. Yeah. I just remember when we were sitting there, I looked at someone's like, someone's dressed like a leprechaun. Well, I told you, I'm like, dude, there's fucking bingo over there. You told me afterwards. Oh, after I noticed you noticed the leprechaun walking in <laughs> at first. And I was like, I told Alex, my buddy that I went with, the guy from the Slinksters, um, I told him, like, yeah, looks like, what the fuck's up with this? But I guess it's just a crazy Stanhope fan. Yeah. Because it was so dark, because I think the opener was already going on. Yeah, uh, opener Gabe was... Tarango? No, no, it was... Tarango, was it? It was Omar Tarango. Yes. Or, yeah, Omar Tarango. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. But then again, we were just like... The same way that anytime there's like an opener that you don't give a fuck about for your yeah. favorite band. It's not that he wasn't good because he was good. It's just not my style of comedy because I really hate that that El Paso centric comedy. Like, oh yeah, I'm yes. Hispanic and we're gonna tell a bunch so of why Hispanic I don't or... like a lot of Mexican comedians because yeah. if it's all about El Paso or Ch if anyone if anyone listening if you ever said Chuco pride and you meant it. Even Fuck if, you. <laughs> yeah, even if yourself, your family, even if you're like, close to me, even if you love me and I love you back, if you've ever said Chuko Pride and meant it, fuck you. What the hell is that? I mean, I guess, El Paso. Like, it's El Paso thing. thing with the whole Chuko scene with like that zoot suit Mexican shit. Oh, okay, no, it's kind of like that. It's just yeah. a lot yeah, of stupid kill shit. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Okay. And the chick that's downing fucking uh, <laughs> half and half like it's shots at Jaeger. She says, oh, no, kill yourself. <laughs> She's about to uh, yeah. fucking money shot herself Nos with her. Nostrovia. To your health. Nostrovia. Just spill it over yourself so I have some in the spank bag. <laughs> Daddy needs something more in the spank bag. Come on. It's kind of bubbling up over her lips there if you look closely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're giving him half a chub. Look, check it out. <laughs> she looks. <laughs> for those of you uh, listening at home, she she sheepishly gazed in the direction crush. of of morphine's cock. Your crush is covered by your arm. No, How do you know that? They saw where your eyes were looking. It was more like that. <laughs> it was a it was a quick downward glance. I did not look. I looked over here. What? You fuck this. Is Josh about to do a fucking shot of Tabasco? Oh, he oh. is. Give me some water. Give me some water. Oh, this is going to be horrible, folks. Oh, no. Give me some water. Okay. And then you're going to have to look at her crotch afterwards. No. <laughs> I'll lick her leg. I'll do it with you. Hold on. Oh, shit. Uh. <laughs> you're a pussy ass. No, what the fuck? <laughs> uh. You're a baby. Do the whole thing. Oh, oh, she just God. fucking... She's gonna one up me. This is quickly turning into a jackass <laughs> episode. I'm gonna do the whole thing. Oh. Now I'll lower that with water and I'll, nothing to drink, okay? Wow. I needed the chaser because... Look, twice as much. Twice? Ooh. Oh. She's just like... Look at this. Wait for it. Wait for no, it. She, she just, she just downed... Not, she's uh, downing the second sip of it. Yeah, she just... Doing anything. For those of you confused at home, Gracia just downed a fucking half and half container full of uh, Tabasco sauce. Well, I did like a quarter of a shot. <laughs> and I did not drink water. And she swallowed, folks. 
I think we. <laughs> you can hear the the semi shame in her voice. Yeah, I, I swallowed. Yeah, it sounded like that. That's why I said I have to buy her a few drinks, and then I'll just be like, "Yeah, girl, I got half and half in the car." <laughs> oh man. Okay, we've uh, deviated in many ways, um, but yes, this weekend has been amazing. One gun for the history books for both of us. Oh, definitely, man. And I, I really think the it's going to translate into uh, inspiration for the direction the show's taken, the direction our uh, as being artists. Yeah, we'll take. As as douchey as that sounds, it is going to fucking uh, David, go for motivate it. us. I'm not fucking taking Tabasco. I don't want to shit water for the next week. I always have problems with my stomach anyway. Yeah. With the medication I take, that already happens. I hope. In the yeah, I'll come in she's, the back, she's getting the. The guys is getting a nice uh, Tabasco drip going. I'll bars? go to the ATM and get you twenty bucks if you do a line of the Tabasco sauce. Oh god! Oh my god! No, no, dude. Well, again, I guess she's not that extreme. She's trying <laughs> to show me up, but oh, she can't good. do that. One of you guys do it. I'm not doing a fucking line of Tabasco, fuck that. No, I would need some other uh, narcotics to help me. <laughs> <laughs> wow, there she goes. Fuck. Instead of Mocaine, I'll do a Tabacane. Tabacane. You are sweating now. Alright, well, my computer looks like it's already getting slow, so... Uh, I don't drink water, that's for pussies. I think... I am what I eat, baby. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. Tell me I'm good with dick, but still no, if the chick, the right chick, I could go on, go down on her for an hour. We had this discussion. Yes, we had the discussion <laughs> yesterday. But um, anyways, I guess. <laughs> Shit. She's good. She's got the hacking hackers, Get like a hacking up. smoker's cough. Right now. Yeah, no she's gonna be like a Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, I guess we'll go ahead and stop the podcast from here because it's been so chaotic. Exactly. This has been, been so very much chaotic. Fun. With- but still, yeah, we're still riding it's high it's off it's this sweet. amazing weekend. Mm-hmm. Because holy Christ, it's just been fantastic. I know we're, we're fucking gushing like schoolgirls right now because of it. But I mean, fuck it, you know. I mean, this was this was because this is like we're at, what twenty eight both. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're twenty eight years old, and we're both like still like fanboys because we got to meet our fucking idols yeah. this past weekend. So. Mm-hmm. Forgive our gushingness and the uh, the randomness and the horrible music in the background. <laughs> and, yeah, and Grace's random uh, sexual innuendos. Yes, but, with uh, all the uh, chick sitting next to me with all the milk spilled on her thighs, down her chin, everything. I did not have milk on your chin. Did I? It's okay, he'll give me some right now. You're <laughs> mean, Melissa. <laughs> all right, well, all right. Thank guys. you guys for listening. And hopefully, especially if it's a new fan, the guy that was sitting next to me at the Stanhope episode that actually had the Stanhope 08 shirt. Yeah. That big de- guy with his ponytail that was next to me, like, did the whole show. Thank you, everyone, for listening and actually keeping up to date. And all the new fans, old fans, everyone. But at the same time, if family's listening to it and getting offended, fuck it. I had an amazing weekend. I'm still sore as fuck. <laughs> Thank you guys for, for uh, listening to us, for supporting the, the Facebook page, especially all the fucked up shit that we post. And keeping with us. Yeah, all keep, this keep the ideas coming. Keep this the... October will be like our two-year anniversary with the podcast. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah, well, uh, we're going to go ahead and end it there. Thank you guys. Uh, see you out there. Have a good one, brother. Okay, so...